Hey, today we're going to be checking out this uh, Craig Rip Cut. Guarantees uh, straight, accurate, repeatable cuts. Made easy with your circular saw. But God knows I have one of the oldest and most reliable, yet not the most powerful, circular saws in the world. Going to upgrade this guy soon. Done a whole lot of work with it. Still in really good shape. But let's see how it works out. We're going to cut some wood. Saw got pretty simple. Not that complicated. I'm digging it. Connect the edge guide to the rail. Some screws here. Orient the filler stop. Filler strip D on the sled is shipped with the angle ropes facing up. Okay. These ribs support saw base with an angle leading edge keeping the saw base flat on the sled with the set screws in the base lift the filler strip the sled access on the tip of a screwdriver to expose the flat face and press it into the recess okay. grab another screwdriver grabbing another screwdriver Pop that one out okay and lift the Turn it over and expose the flat face and press it into the recess. Okay, well, I'm guessing it goes the eye way. Little angle there. Looks like it points towards the front. Ah, uh, there we go. Nice. Mount your circular saw on the stand. Move the indexing stop from the sled. Check the position of the cursor. Two positions on the sled where there was two sled slots. Position the cursor in the holder of the front of the saw blade. Oh, there's my cursor. Oh, look at that. It's got a little. Look at that. It's got a little cursor right there. That's going to be uh, no fun to set up. But I guess once it's set, it's ready to rock and roll. Hmm. So there's my... Well, that would be helpful if they gave a better indication as to where the cursor sat. Well, that's frustrating. This little, this little tabby guy's got to go away. They're in the way. Right. And... Is a little frustrating. But that guy is going to sit right on top of that point. Mm, 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 mm. Well, that is not cool. That's not going to work. Sit right on top of there. Mount this guy like that. So this 
kind of thing right here. That's just annoying. Why doesn't that sit flat? This is all caddy want. That sort of uh, it stinks. I don't know if this is set up right or not. If I loosen the screw pressure, I mean it sits flat, but that clearly is not taut in any type of any type of way. Looks like these maybe. They don't get adjusted that way. Maybe they get adjusted a different way. Got that set up and got plenty of room for the uh, guide to clean. No, let's disconnect this battery. That's uh, that should have happened a long time ago. All right. Anyway. So I guess that's it. I guess that's the sled and the sled is on there and uh, the sled is on. There. All right. I'm all that. that would be nice if they gave a, a better cut mark. Check the position of the cursor. There are two positions of the cursor left in two sled slots. Position the cursor in the holder area of the saw blade. Got that, okay. So, and so reinstall the indexing stop. The indexing stop allows you to move the saw from the sled and then remount it exactly the same position. Place the indexing stop. So that guy went there like that, right? Don't know what the heck that piece does, but uh, it does something. Put him to uh, folks there. Put that guy back in there. The indexing stop allows you to remove the saw from the sled and remount it in exactly the same position. Oh, I see. So this little guy right here is supposed to go butt up against there, and that's what that's what is my that's my quickie my quickie readjust. That's the indexing stop. And this way, um, you have a nice square that this all butts up against. So when you take this off, you can just slap that back on, and now your cursor is going to be lined up. There's the cursor right there, kind of back to the zero position. Uh, let's double check that with just a square here, real quick. Uh, Close. Slide this guy over just a hair. The cursor has pretty fine adjustment. And uh, we'll have to give that a shot. There's no, unfortunately, there's no clear way from your mark on your saw um, to kind of ride up here and eyeball all of this. Got like these lines here, which look good, but it would be better if they continued them along here just so you had a better reference point of where this would line up. I think I got it pretty close. All right, so the indexing stop, that's done. Uh, slide the sled onto the rail. With your saw clamped to the sled, raise the handle. Raise the brute. Fence feels kind of like it's made out of uh, some cheapy, some cheapy plastic there, but I don't know. It's not bad. 
I mean, off the top of my head, the thing that I see that's kind of a limitation is that there's this area here on, let me pop this off here. It says in this area right here, it says that this is not this first inch here between the fence and the cut says not recommended C manual. Well, that's kind of a bummer. I kind of wanted this because I needed a stupid super fine cut off the edge and the uh, the fence that came with the saw was kind of garbage. I'm wondering if maybe it's time to retire this saw. We'll give it a shot. We'll see how it, how it rolls here. Yeah, let's see what we got next. Uh, line the cursor to the narrowest cut. Rotate the saw blade guard up and say, yeah, we did that until the blade just touches the edge of the guide. Lock the sled in position by pressing down on the handle. I want this to roll up like that. And then that. So what I got here, let me swing this around. So the saw blade is up against the fence. Alright. So we're saying we're cutting along this line here. And then they want you to align the cursor to the end of the fence. Which is about where I got it. Give it a squishy plastic. Yeah, it looks pretty good. It's pretty good. Just a bump. Just a bump. Like yep. Okay. So here's how it's all set up. There's the index stop right there. That lines up with the edge of the uh, shoe, the end of the fence there. And if you want to take the saw back out, you just undo that screw and that screw right there and the whole saw slips out. There's your cursor. That's lined up right there. That's lined up with the index there on the saw. And just for the heck of it, there's the, uh, the bolts, the two screws to hold the fence on. Pretty, uh, pretty sweet little rig. All right, so the piece of wood I am cutting is a thin garbage piece of, uh, whoops, uh, I hate when that happens. It's a thin garbage piece of uh, masonite. And I need it to be 38. So we'll make a mark. There's 38. 38. 38. And then I need 18. It's to be 18. 38. <laughs>
clean this up. Well, so far, I gotta say that that, I would have never, uh, that did work nicely. I mean, this is obviously really thick material, but I'm not so sure that I would have been able to uh, just cut it that rapidly without a whole bunch of fanfare. Now this is gonna be a little bit trickier because I gotta set this up on the, uh, the other side here. All right, so let's see what we got here. So this, now that I'm cutting, I need to cut this way, right? So I loosen the clamp, and I slide my jaw over. Can't believe I just said John on the camera. I did, however, say John. Get that guy slid out there. That's cool. equally good that was decent once again I don't think I could have made a cut that nice before sorry car well uh, there you have it some uh it's a decent jig not bad do you uh if you're uh if you're of uh my caliber of woodworking and you can't cut a straight line with a circular saw to save your life uh 40 bucks it's a decent jig. So I just gotta say, if you're of my caliber of uh, woodworker, which is to say that you're not that great, um, this is a decent product for the money spent. Kept on my thumbs. And hopefully, the last a while, I am not a uh, finished carpenter and I am not a contractor. I do not see this product lasting a long time on a job site, like I said before, but for a DIY homeowner, Nice straight cuts with the uh, with the wood there. Decent, decent stuff. Double side note. Double side note here. Uh, the saw seems to store fine in the uh, the holding fixture that I got there. Uh, does add a little little bulk to it, but it's not bad. And the uh, the fence that that mounts pretty decently back up with all my other hanging tools here in the garage. So storage storage isn't a big problem.